Deep in Central Africa, in one of the most ancient habitats on the continent, is the last refuge of one of the rarest mammals on Earth, the endangered mountain gorilla. I'm Nick Clark, flying into the impenetrable forest of Burundi in Uganda to see how this most threatened of species is actually beating the odds and making a comeback. From above, on the fringes of the forest, evidence of how man has stripped the hillsides for cultivation. The mountain gorilla's range is now tightly squeezed into the boundaries of Buindi National Park and the nearby Virunga Mountain. Good work. Get it. All right, I'm with Escario here, who was born in the village just down below. He's a walking safari guide. Yeah. And you know this forest like nobody else, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. And here, right here, we can see three countries, can't we? Yeah, so we are on the edge of the Bind Forest, which is in Uganda. So here, DRC Congo is in the west, Rwanda mm -hmm. in the south, and now the Bind Forest also in the north. So the mountain gorillas are found here in the Bind Impenetrable Forest and also in the Virunga Mountains. Okay, and that's the only area in the world. Yeah, in the whole the world, that's right. where the mountain gorillas are found. So these are the last remaining outposts. Yeah, the they are the gorilla. endangered mountain gorillas. The total population of mountain gorillas on the entire planet decreased staggeringly to just 570 in 1989. A combination of habitat destruction, human disease, and poaching decimated the population. But a unique conservation effort has started to turn things around. Today, there are nearly 800 living in the wild. Surprisingly, for such a sensitive area, tourism has been a key factor. Local communities can now see the benefits of conservation because the gorillas bring thousands of visitors every year. We are benefiting because of gorillas because they buy our things, so we are benefiting. We and the gorillas, we are friends. In fact, around 30,000 of the local villages now benefit from tourism-related work. But this is not the only conservation effort that's helped improve the relationship between local people and gorillas. I've heard about the buffer zone that's been created to tackle the problem of gorillas raiding villagers' crops. Stephen Azuma of the International Gorilla Conservation Programme is the expert. So what have we got there? This is farmland, clearly, forest yep. here. So clearly across the, across the valley, you find the community cultivating right up to the park edge okay. because they don't have enough land due to the high population. It introduces an element of conflict. When the animals come from the forest, they go to raid the crops, yeah? But when they go to raid the crops, the community don't get compensation. And the principle behind the buffer zone is that it has been divided into two sections. The inner section is supposed to be managed to provide for the needs of the gorillas. Now, the outer strip is supposed to be unsuitable, harsh, right. for the animals. So we can see the line of this hedge going along here. So this is the outer edge of the buffer zone. That's right. When it's well established and well knitted, if any animal tries to come in, the thorns prick. This section where we are, you can see to my right is crop field, yep. which wasn't there before. Yep. That's how it works. OK. Yes, please. It's a good plan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. back up the hill. So the local community are learning to share their land with the gorillas. But the comeback of these endangered animals is down to more than compromise. Gorillas share as much as 98% of their DNA with humans, and it's easy for them to catch many of our diseases, some of which can be life-threatening. Committed doctors and trackers monitor their health around the clock. Augustine, a local villager, is our tracker and guide. So you, you okay. can look at the droppings. When you closely observe, you also see the silvery hair. Just about make it out. Yeah. So, as his hair. Yeah. Cheek. Yeah. So this is where they were last night, and they've moved on. Yeah, they moved Probably on. Probably not far away. Yeah. You tell that they are about 20 meters to reach the gorillas. 20 meters? Yes. 
that's a communication. Yeah, those ones, you can see them. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Of the gorillas, there they are. Yeah. That's incredible. Look at him. It's incredible. This guy is Safari. He's the alpha male. He's the chief. He's the boss, the chief silverback. And you can really see there the silverback of the mature adult. You can really get the uh, aroma, pungent, pungent, sweet-smelling aroma, especially the silverbacks, quite strong. There's a baby in the tree. There. There's a baby in the tree. <laughs> so they are my cousins. And it is something magical to have cousins who live in the wild. And now we have also doctors who come for a routine check up of the healthy of the family and that gives us hope that the mountain gorillas will survive. Dr. Fred is one of the gorilla doctors. All the while he's been closely monitoring the health of an injured member of the family to see if he requires any further medical treatment. Chirunji had um, an injury on the left jaw which had led to the swelling of the whole face. Daily monitoring by the truckers and myself coming in. We have uh, seen that the swearing has uh, reduced. Okay. Tell me, Dr. Fred, yes, please. about the gorilla doctors in terms of uh, how successful the organization has been and what difference it's made. Uh, it's been shown that actually veterinary medical care interventions uh, have contributed to the increase, the upturn of uh, gorilla population. How close do you think we are to take the mountain gorilla off the endangered list? International Gorilla Conservation Program still needs uh, to put in more effort. We are hopeful we can reach to a point where we are conserving for generations. Another day and we're in another country, we're in Rwanda because we've heard about this temporary care facility where they've just taken delivery of an orphaned gorilla. So we're gonna go and check that out. As well as disease, injury and population growth, poaching is still a problem across the gorilla range, particularly for babies. She was taken from an area of Congo called Bukima, uh, which we know is inhabited by mountain gorillas. Um, poachers there tried to sell her, actually did sell her, at the border between Congo and Rwanda. Um, and the Rwandese police arrested the two poachers that, that bought her. She had a really pretty serious upper respiratory disease when she came to us. The poachers were all sick, and when we confiscated her, they sneezed all over her. Um, but just like you would for any year-and-a-half-old child, she was on ibuprofen and antibiotics, and She's doing great. She was very lucky to be confiscated because I'm convinced she'd be dead if she weren't confiscated. And so what about the future? What's going to happen to her? Once we confirm that she's a mountain gorilla, she will be transferred back to Congo, where she's from, and she will learn to be a gorilla with the other four mountain gorillas. You know, it was not so long ago that we might have been talking about the end of the very existence of the mountain gorilla on this planet. But now, thanks to the unique conservation efforts that we've been seeing, that we've been witnessing, the incredible fact is that the mountain gorilla is the only one of the five great apes whose numbers are actually increasing. <laughs>